Welcome back. Today we're going to be going over how to use the Printful app and how to set up an online store without having any inventory. So let's jump into it. So today I'm going to show you how to set up a product inside Shopify using one of the third-party services and an app called Printful. And this app is going to let us generate out a product and be able to sell it on our online store without actually having any products created or built. It's all on-demand printing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to set up a cell phone case. And this cell phone case is going to have some line art drawings that we have and we're going to post it on a website. So I can show you all the steps involved when setting up this kind of business. Now um, I have a drawing that if we head over to the dashboard that we've got put together here. So I'm going to go through the steps on how you bump this up and get this ready inside Photoshop. It's important to prepare your files before you put them on your website. So this is kind of a tutorial that mixes some Photoshop work with how to use the Printful app. But it's important that you have all your files set up properly before you go and start setting them to printing just so that you get the best possible result when you get your product uh, produced. So if Shopify, we have this uh, beautiful line drawing of the sailor girl here. And what we want to do is we first want to go and remove the background. Because we want this to be printed on a, a clear cell phone case so that you can see the logos and stuff of the cell phone that you're using through the case because that's important as well as the color of the case because that also, or color of the phone rather. So that's also an important piece of when someone's purchasing a phone is they want to be able to see the phone itself. So a little bit of art on the uh, case is really nice, um, but you're probably going to increase the amount of sales that you have if you don't make a fully complete case. So um, what we're going to do is first we're going to take the uh, background object and we're going to create a new layer from it. And we do that by double clicking on background. Once we've done that, we want to drag the layer over the new button and create a duplicate layer. The reason we're doing this is because whenever we scan something, we want to keep the original scan in its native state. We never want to modify it beyond or put modifications on it because if you modify it, then you never have a place to go back to and you have to go rescan it. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to then lock the layer for safety purposes and then I'm going to turn it off. So now we have layer zero copy, which we're going to rename to artwork. Okay, great. So we've now renamed that to artwork. The next thing we want to do is we want to clean up the scan and we want to do this by adjusting the levels. So I'm going to go um, to, I'm going to hit command L on the keyboard and it's going to bring up my levels histogram. And when you're looking at this histogram, this histogram shows you how many pixels are in each color range. So the more uh, pixels that are in the white range, the higher the graph is going to be, and the less that are in the black range are going to be down here. As you pull in this slider, it's going to compress the blacks. So it's going to make them pop a little bit more. It's going to bring them out. So I'm going to go to right at the edge of the graph and I'm going to do the same thing on the whites. And by doing this, I'm going to be able to give it that pop we're looking for on our image. And one of the other things that you should keep in mind is when you're having things printed, uh, especially on cases or in a sticker state, usually a higher saturation is more beneficial because it's going to give you a nicer overall look. Um, but you're going to have to print them and test them out to see which works best for you. So after we've uh, adjusted the levels, now what we want to do is we want to remove the background. So we're going to take the magic wand tool and we're going to select all of the light. Now I've got it set at a tolerance of 30. I probably am actually going to bump that up because we have a black line around the entire object. We can actually go a color tolerance of 100, which will get all of the uh, speckled pixels because it was written or because it was done on a piece of paper a piece of paper isn't a perfect white background so um, you want a little bit of tolerance there for what pixels it selects <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we're going to hold the shift key and we're going to get this last little piece in here of her arm so then we're going to go to the layer tab and we're going to add a mask now before we do that we want to inverse selection so we do that by going command shift i and that's going to inverse the selection so just the lady is selected. And then we're going to hit the add layer mask. And that's going to hide the, uh, the white in the background. Now, it's not going to delete it, it's just going to hide it from our view. 
Okay, so now the last thing we want to do is we want to go and add a layer, adjustment layer. So if you go up to new adjustment layer and you come down to hue and saturation, we're going to bump up her hue and saturation just slightly. So we're just going to give it a little bit more hue and a little bit more saturation. We don't want to go too much, but we want to keep her blonde hair looking beautiful. Okay, that's about it. And we're going to turn the saturation down just a bit. All right, great. We've got our file pretty much prepped. The only additional thing that I'm going to add to this is a little bit of blur. So I'm going to duplicate the artwork layer um, and I'm going to call this one blur. Oh, that's blue. I'm going to call this one blur. And then I'm going to go up to filter and I'm going to go to Gaussian blur. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me a blur of all the pencil crayon um, and just kind of smooth everything out. Now when we look at this image, it's kind of blurry. So we're going to have to back that off a little bit. So the reason we created a secondary layer is so that we could take the opacity and turn the opacity down just a little bit to give it that kind of glamour glow over everything. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. So now we have to go and save this as a PSD. The reason we need to save this as a PSD is because the printing company needs a high resolution file that they're going to be able to actually print onto the, uh, the case. If we supply them with a JPEG, it might not be at high enough resolution um, for them to be able to make a good product. So now what we're going to do is we're going to save this as a SD file. All right, so now that we've done the work inside of Photoshop, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our web browser. So I've already installed the Printful app. I'll link a, leave a link in the description to the app so that you can go and install it yourself. But once you've installed it, we can get to this dashboard and we can go to Add Product. <clears throat> so I'm going to go and add a product. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to go under Accessories. And we're going to go under iPhone Cases. Okay, great. So now we have the new iPhone case that we need to create. So we're going to go iPhone um, XR and we're going to go with a clear case and then we're going to go and upload the file. So we're going to go choose that file that we just created and we've got to up it. I'm going to go and grab my file here. It's going to go and process it. Okay, so once the file is finished uploading, we can go and select. We can now process it. It looks great. It's got a transparent background. We can go and choose it. Um, next comes positioning on the phone. Now, because I already knew what the dimensions were of the uh, cell phone case, it already is, is positioned and sized correctly. Now, they have a template file that you can download um, if you want to make sure that it fits properly uh, before you go through the whole process of uploading it. So once we've done that, we can now proceed to mock-ups. Okay, so we have our mock-ups that they've created for us. We can see all the different uh, mock-ups that give us for images, which is great. Um, and then we can go and proceed to the description. Uh, for mock-up format, I would really recommend using a ping file format so that if you're modifying the background or anything on uh, the website itself, that transparency is going to be there. The file difference between a ping file and JPEG is not going to be noticeable enough for most people. So we're going to proceed to it. There is a difference there, but you know, you want to make sure that uh, you balance what you're doing with what file type you're using. Okay, um, description, we're just going to leave it as it is right now. We are going to need to come back and bump up the description of the phone. Um, but for the purpose of this demo, we'll just leave what they've got there. Then it's going to give us a bunch of different prices. So the pr prices are going to be set by Printful. Um, you can go and change your retail price if you want to make it a little bit more profit. We sell them for $29.50 $29 uh, because the artwork is worth a little bit of money as well. So it's not just the cell phone price. Um, so we're going to go and put this in here. and we're going to submit it to the store. Once it's submitted to the store, it's uh, pretty much ready to be purchased. Finally, the last thing we need to do is go to collections. We need to add it to a collection. So if we go to cases, we can go and add the new case that we've just added.
Excellent. Uh, I just want to go in and modify the name of the case to Sexy Sailor Girl. And now we can see it showing up on our website. So people would be able to choose the phone that they prefer and then they would hit, be able to hit add to card and they'd be able to check out. Thanks for coming by. I hope this was helpful. If it was, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if that's something that you're into and we will see you in the next one.